When I spoke at the History Teachers Conference, the New South Wales History Teachers Conference last Friday, I was really worried about the preparation of the Australian community for our engagement with Asia. I mean, here we're a country with an extraordinary amount of our trade in the Asian region, increasingly investment connections there, education connections there. Here we've got our treasurer in this year's budget speech emphasising what he sees as that great historic shift from west to east and talking about the need to maximise Australian interests, Australian advantages in the Asian century. A former Prime Minister talking about the need for an Asia-literate Australia. It comes in fact, of course, from both sides of politics too. And yet, when you look at the history curriculum, you see that a student can more or less avoid studying Asia with one exception throughout 10 years of the study of history. Now here's a fantastic opportunity, a national history curriculum, an opportunity to position Australians, to help the Australian community to think about where we are in the world. Of course that curriculum needs to, to stress the, the great project of building a society on this continent, a society based on Western, largely British principles, I guess, and institutions. That's really important to do that, to place us in the European context. But it's, it's also vitally important to place us in the Asia context, to help students to see the background of a situation where their leaders talk constantly of our Asian relationships and security and economic terms, where our front pages of our newspapers are about Asian issues, to help students to get that frame of mind, that approach to the region, and yet to Australia in the region. And yet, as I say, the curriculum, it's good. It starts by saying, good in one respect, starts by saying that um, that, the, that Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia will be a cross-curriculum, a cross-curriculum emphasis, a cross-curriculum priority. But very little guidance for the teachers after that and how you implement that cross-curriculum priority throughout those 10 years of the teaching of history. And in fact, really a situation where a student needn't do much on Asia, in fact can do very little on Asia. As I, as I read it, uh, you could get away with uh, a, a period of studying ancient China or ancient India, a fairly short period really, and that would be the end of your encounter with Asia in that, in that course, in that series of courses, that program of 10 years teaching in history. And I'm not just concerned here about, about the amount of Asia being taught, but also about the way the Australian story is taught how people think about Australia. So it's not just a question of more and more Asia, but how you think about Australia. They need to get a sense of the Australian community with that European background, but located in this region. The logic of this, the need in a way will come through, the, uh, the impetus to study Asia will come through as a result of telling the Australian story in what I'd see as the right way. So we need to think not just about creative ways to introduce Asian material into that curriculum, but how you teach the Australian story to direct that and to drive that. I've, I've been thinking recently about generations, about how one generation helps or doesn't help later generations. I've been thinking about the Generation of Federation, 1900, their White Australia policy and the huge negative implications that's brought for us today and in recent decades. We need to think like that about our education now. With a history curriculum, we're creating, creating an, an Australian attitude, an Australian frame of mind for the next generations. We've got to get this right. We have to think in terms of intergenerational damage. We want to make sure now that what students are studying now, what this generation of teachers and academics and others involved in preparing the history curriculum, what they're doing for future generations. We want to get this right. We don't want to make the sort of mistakes that that generation of federation did and left us with a white Australia policy that has damaged us in many directions. So it's a good thing, a very positive thing, that we've now got Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia as a cross-curriculum priority. But the job now, the really serious job now, and it's no minor matter, is to push that through year by year, year particularly 
in the uh, history curriculum to show how that could be taught year by year. And the second job is to help teachers to do that. And there's got to be a way to provide that professional training for teachers to implement that uh, cross-curriculum priority across the history curriculum.